Hello there, this is News Around Uganda with me, Lynn Komjisha. This 21st day of March 2019. We'll start off with Kabarole District. Now, the Bishop of the Seventh day Adventist Church of Western Uganda, Field WUF Samuel Mwebaza, is nursing injuries after a group of Christians attacked and caned him. Mwebaza was dragged out of his office at the WUF headquarters in Fort Porter Town at around 1 p.m. and caned. The angry Christians, whom the police allege were led by Jonathan Chihumuro, accused the bishop of mismanagement of church funds and failing several projects which they had initiated. It took the intervention of the people around the bishop's office to rescue him as more Christians advanced towards him with sticks and stones. Chihumuro, who is being held at Fort Porto Central Police Station in charges of assaulting the man of God, said several projects, including construction of the church and health center have stalled due to the mismanagement of funds. Now Grace Kabagweri, another member of the SDA church, accused the bishop of disrespecting church members. Lydia Tumshabe, the Renzori West Regional Police spokesperson, says that the, besides Chihumuro, others arrested are Amos Mugenyi, Julius Kakwezi, Moses Mutegeki, Bob Kahewa and Joshua Kakwezi, all members of the church. The seventh person who was arrested had not been identified by press time. Stephen Asimwe, the resident district commissioner, Kawari District, condemned the actions of the Christians, calling it in discipline on the side of church members attacking a bishop with sticks and caning him. We go off to Namayango District. Pupils attending school near landing sites in Namayango District often abandon class to work at the shores. Now, according to Peter Odeke, the local council one chairperson at Mutumba landing site, the children often dodge class in the afternoons to work at the beaches. He says some help dry mukene, the silverfish, or spread out fishing nets. Others are seen mending torn nets. Skovia Nawire, a teacher at Maruba Beach Primary School, said the the number of boys attending lessons after midday is usually small. On average, she says they register 112 learners in the morning only to have about 54 in class in the afternoon. Some do not have school uniforms, which makes it easy for them to blend with locals at the learning sites. While the trend, Nawire urged that some children are lured into doing lecture chores by their peers. The Namengo district education officer said an estimated 100 school dropouts are registered in the local government report annually due to the so-called golden opportunities in the area. Children also work at Lakeside Gold Mines, earning about... 8,000 shillings per day. This quick cash makes them feel that they are wasting time in class. Now, Richard Sanya, the district chairperson, attributed the vice to parents who encourage their children to be breadwinners at an early age. We we'll take a quick break, and look at what's making headlines in today's New Vision. If you cannot get access to the hard copy of the New Vision, please subscribe to our e-paper by following the link on your screen that is available on the Google Play Store. That also includes all the products by Vision Group. Moving on, news coming in from Busia District. A Turkish investor, Mustafa Semi Gachil, has accused the Police Mineral Protection Unit of frustrating his 3.7 billion investment in Busia. He told the New Vision TV that some officers attached to the unit have connived with his Ugandan business partners to block him from mining gold in Busia, where he was licensed to operate. On March 29, 2017, Gechil, through his company, Terra Small Scale Mining Association, secured a license to carry out small scale prospecting and gold mining at Terra village in Sukuda sub-county. However, in a letter to the Inspector General of Police dated February the 27th, Gachil said officers attached to the unit Jessica K. Gomba, Abi Tashobi and Moses Musings had frustrated his efforts. In 2017, Gachil partnered with the Odima family, but a misunderstanding erupted between them which forced him to go to court. He said thereafter, the family decided to use the police to frustrate him. 
at the time Gachir petitioned the IGP, he had just secured a court order stopping the Dima family and the police from interfering with his mining business. The court order issued on February the 13th by the deputy registrar Mbale High Court, Leon Mwanda, restricted the family and the police from obstructing the applicant's mining activities. Gekili says the officers did not heed the court's order and continued to harass him. New Vision TV has also learned that the investors petitioned the internal security organization's boss, Kano Kaka Bajenda, to intervene. Bajenda confirmed that ISA is conducting investigations into the matter, and the matter has also reached the office of the president. Now, news coming in from Palisa District. Over 3,000 people from Agulisa County, Palisa District on Friday got free medical treatment from a team of Chinese Christian doctors. The medical campus held at St. James Church of Uganda, Nyaguyo, Jen Zhang, the team leader, said the specialist from Beijing came to Palisa under the Uganda Chinese Aid Medical Team, the Jing Federation. She said earlier on, when they visited Agule on a Christian mission, they found that a number of people had no access to health care. Charles Omoding, the chairperson, sent James Church of Uganda, who received the money in the public address system on behalf of the Christians, said the intervention would help expedite the creation of a new parish for their church. Omoding said the Bukedi Diocese Bishop Samuel Bogere Egesa last year promised to carve Nyagoe Parish out of Agule, which is now an archdeaconry, provided they complete the church, build a priest's house, and also get means of transport for the parish priest. Ojangole said he met Zhang in Kampala and invited her and her team to Palisa after learning that the Chinese were helping the vulnerable communities in the Bujiri district. And finally, off to Amuria. An 85-year-old man from Abarira sub-county Amuria district on Tuesday died as he was waiting for the final verification process before he could receive payment under the Social Assistance Grants for Empowerment SAGE. Timeline in Eriko Linga, a resident of our Jaitoy village in Oledai Parish, reported to the sub-county headquarters for verification as early as midday, although the exercise was to begin at 2 p.m. Olinga died at around 3 45 p.m. before his name was read by the SAGE officials. The sub-county vice chairperson Simon Eroku said the deceased was among the 52 elders who were to receive the first payment. Now according to Erokui, over 40 elderly persons have been benefiting from the program since it kicked off two years ago. Simon Ochibiel, an in-law who had accompanied Olinga, said medics had advised him not to take alcohol because of his deteriorating health, but he did not heed. He added that Olinga got diarrhea on Monday and had to be rushed to hospital the following day. Roger Akello, the district focal person, Sage, declined to talk to the media, saying she needed permission from the administrative officer, Martin Kiplangat, who said... That this is the second elderly person to die at the venue. The first one was an elder from Morungatun who passed on in 2017. According to Kiplengat, they keep advising the elderly to send the next of kin to receive payment on their behalf, but most of them do not trust their relatives. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates and more of the stories by visiting our website on www.newvision.co.ug forward slash video. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel that is New Vision TV. My name is Lynn Komjisha.